why should I vectorize my lettering? And this is a good question, especially from beginners who don't understand why they would need to vectorize their lettering. And I'm here to answer and show you just a bunch of examples of what you can do once you vectorize your lettering. And there's just so much, I only have a few to show you. So here's the first one. You can create your own little graphics. So for my all of my courses and all of my programs and all of my stuff, everything I offer, I always start out like this on a little sheet of paper, just doodling out the, the name of the course, for instance, over here. And then I take a picture of it and I vectorize it in Illustrator and then create a little graphic that looks like this. Um, which serves as my current little logo graphic for this course. Another one you've probably seen on my newsletter is this one. So this started with a brush and black ink on a piece of printer paper. You can even see the little warped areas there. And then of course I took this picture of it and I popped it into Illustrator, vectorized it, and combined it with some other imagery and stuff in Photoshop, which created this little heading for my newsletter. And if you've participated in my letter study, um, this little program that I had that's coming back soon, it again started out with just a little sketch on a piece of paper. You can even see my keyboard there, my desk. And then I just took this picture of it, vectorized it, and I was able to reverse the colors out and make it bigger and then place um, this black color behind it and another picture. And I have a nice little heading for my letter study emails that I was sending out weekly. So if you have your own blog or your own website, adding a little bit of your own lettering to your blog images or to your YouTube covers, if you do YouTube videos, is just gonna personalize it even more and just add a little bit of you to it. So for instance, in this one, this is a video on bounce lettering that I uploaded to YouTube and I actually bounced this little bounce lettering piece and um, I vectorized it and I put it on top of my little image over here. That's, that's the cover for the YouTube video. So that when you read it, you can easily see how to add bounce and then the bounce is actually bounced. So this just adds another little personal touch to your, um, to your images. And what could be more personal than your own logo, guys? This is how I created mine. I did a bunch of different sketches and a bunch of different ways um, that I wrote two easels out with a brush and ink. And then once I picked the one that I really loved, I just cut it out and I scanned it. This is a scanned version of it. And then I vectorized it and now I can scale it up or down and I don't have to worry about um, the quality and um, losing any detail and having it look fuzzy if I scale it up for any reason. Here's another little logo for course I created. This is for the lettering course. This was just a simple little sketch. I never even thought about this. I just wrote it out quickly, added a little texture inside the letters and scanned it and then reversed it out, added this little outline all the way to the back. And um, I can add different colors now. I can change it out. I can scale it up and down and never lose quality and um, have it always look the same. This one was the most fun. This I did last year when I had my little baby boy. So instead of going online and just ordering someone else's design for a little announcement for my baby, I decided of course to make my own. So I wrote out a bunch of different ways of spelling his name and hello world and all that kind of stuff. And then I scanned it in and then, um, picked one that I like and kind of um, set it up here in Illustrator and then popped a picture in the background. I even added this little banner in Illustrator. I just drew it out and um, this little one here and then I typed in the actual weight and stuff um, down below and created his little card. And then I just printed a bunch of these out and sent them out to friends and family. So you can really customize your um, your greeting cards, your little announcement cards like this, um, Christmas cards. You can do pretty much everything once you learn how to vectorize your lettering 
and throw some Photoshop in there because Photoshop just makes everything that much better. And once you're ready to really start teaching lettering or even for yourself, you can create your own worksheets. I do these for my courses and sometimes for blog posts. I add a little hand lettering worksheet, little practice sheets. And the way I do these, I just use a sheet of paper where I just write out the letters a few times till I get the one that I really like. And then I scan it in. And the reason I vectorize them is so that I can change the opacity really quickly. And also so that the files aren't huge. If each of these was a copy of a picture that I took, um, a raster picture, it, the file size would be huge. Um, but because it's vectorized, um, it takes up less space in the computer. And then you guys can easily download it, download it from the email that I sent. So um, it is super easy and then you can just add a grid in the background, align everything. It's so much easier to align things in Illustrator than it would be in Photoshop. It's just the click of the button instead of moving and tweaking stuff in Photoshop, which would take forever. Okay, and this one I created actually on my iPad, but it doesn't create um, vectors. So from this picture that I created on the iPad, I exported it to Illustrator, vectorized it, made an SVG file, and then sent it to my Cricut and did a little cutout on a heat transfer vinyl and applied it to my little notebook for my book blog. So that's where I'm gonna take all my book notes. And lastly, what isn't cooler than creating your own fonts, guys? Who doesn't wanna create their own font? I've been wanting to do this since like college and I finally figured out how and I'm finally doing it. I already have half of it done. So I started this in the little 100 day project um, that I was part of, but I never got to finish it. So I'm starting to pick it up again. I wrote out my letters, you can see a bunch of times over here, just, just using my Tumbow brush pen. And then I picked the ones that I really like. I scanned everything in, vectorized them. And here you can see that I did the capital letters already as a font and I started using it in my Facebook um, posts, my weekly thread posts. So when you zoom in, you can see that this font right here is my own font guys so once i finish the font i will put it up for sale or maybe for free i'm not even sure what i'm gonna do with it maybe i'll keep it just for my private use but this is kind of my own handwriting so i just wanted to pop my own handwriting into these little post images and make them a lot more personal and of course hand lettering because the group is about hand lettering so why not have the images have hand lettering in them, right? And it just looks so much better like this. And I didn't have to move each letter to get um, a word out, or I didn't have to write out each word and then take a picture of this and vectorize it. I just created a font and it is amazing. So I hope this explains a little bit more why you would wanna vectorize your lettering. Why? Because it's limitless. There is so many more options that you can have using your own lettering. You can make fonts, logos, your own blog post images, um, Pinterest images, anything basically you can do using Illustrator. And if you combine Photoshop with that, you are limitless. There is no stopping you. So I want you to go and do some lettering today and think about all these possibilities that you can do with your own lettering. Maybe you want to create a font and make some little cash on the side, or you want to start printing out um, greeting cards or those little baby announcements for somebody else. Um, vectorizing your lettering will give you just so many more options. So go ahead and have a nice day.